Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So what you could hear there was the sound of spherics. Now these spherics, whistlers, or click and pops are a fascinating variety of a natural and possibly man-made phenomena. These signals are found between three to 30 kilohertz, and using a device like this lets you hear them. Now I will show you how to make this yourself at home so you can delve into the rabbit hole called VLF or very low frequency receiving. But before we look at how to make one of these, let's first discuss what we're actually listening to. Now most of the natural VLF signals stem from lightning strikes and the first type you may hear would be spherics. Now these sound like clicks and pops or crackling. Now these come from terrestrial lightning strikes, which can be from hundreds to thousands of miles away. Next, we have something called tweaks. Now these are also from lightning strikes, but highly dispersed and further away. These sound more like a faint ringing tone, which descend in pitch. Now these may only last for half a second to one second each. Next, we have whistlers. Now these still come from lightning, but they come from the lightning energy which propagates along geomagnetic field lines. These can be up to one second in length too, and are best captured at night, around midnight, which incidentally was when I recorded the audio you heard at the start of the video. Another natural VLF signal could come from auroral or geomagnetic activity. Now these are charged particles from solar wind interacting with the magnetosphere. Now these sound like hiss, rising and falling tones, and even chorus. Upper atmosphere discharges, sometimes called sprites, can also be detected. Now these are transient luminous events located actually above thunderstorms. Now these are similar to spherics, but are often multi-pulse bursts. Of course, electrical noise can also be detected, and when performing these kind of received tests, it's best to be far away from any man-made objects, especially things like power lines, transformers, and switching electronics. Now the hum you could hear in the example at the start of the video was likely due to me being too close to the house while recording. Now I got interested in this when I come across a website called techlib.com. There's a whole host of information on VLF natural radio reception there. They even have many different electronic circuit designs that you can build yourself. Some are very easy and some are a little bit more complex to build. Now the complex designs do offer better performance with built-in amplifiers and some designs can be used directly with a computer's sound card and just a short antenna wire. Now if you are interested then I would advise to take a look at this excellent website for more information and of course I will link that below. Now it was on this site that I came across the easiest and quickest VLF receiver to make and this consists of only three components. Yep, that's just three components. Now these three components are one capacitor, one transistor, and one resistor. Now this is the circuit, and on the website it mentions that the capacitor value was not too critical, even though it shows there a 560 picofarad capacitor. Now I think mine when I made it was around 360 PF, and that worked just fine. Now the transistor that I used was a J201, which is an N-channel JFET. And as I could not locate a 44 mega ohm resistor, I actually used two 20 mega ohm resistors in series, which of course gives me the 44 mega ohm resistor that's needed. Now this circuit is not powered by a battery and it works by plugging it into a microphone port of an audio recorder. Now while performing more research on this design, I came across a YouTube channel called DX Explorer which has a whole host of interesting videos. In fact, he had made a video using this same circuit design, and his video gave me the idea of how to put mine together, as I already had the parts laying around. Now on the bottom, I used a banana plug socket attached to this little metal box. Now I had a few of these left over from when I was making some RF power sensors, so it just kind of made sense. Into the banana plug socket, I pushed a 10 inch long 4 mm wide aluminium rod, which will be used for the earth. Now this also makes a great stand or spike for holding the whole receiver assembly vertical. 
I also attached a 3.5 mm socket so that I could connect an audio cable between the VLF receiver and my portable audio recorder. On the top, I installed an SMA socket so that I could easily attach a small telescopic antenna. Now, I didn't have an audio recorder when I first started this project, so I purchased this one from Amazon and it was only around £7. And that's super cheap and I really didn't want to spend too much just in case it didn't work. Now you must make sure that if you do buy an audio recorder that it has a microphone input so you can connect the output of the VLF receiver directly into it. Now inside you can see I opted for the dead bug wiring method as there are only three components. Well, four if you want to include both of the resistors separately. Now I could have used some VeraBoard or even made a PCB using my CNC machine. But for the first test and for this video, I just wanted to keep it simple so that you guys can easily replicate this if you wanted to. Now, I'm not sure how good the case is actually grounded here. Maybe I need to experiment more with that later. I mean, you could actually just use a plastic box, which of course wouldn't even be grounded. But if you listen to my audio example at the beginning, you could hear a hum and you can hear also an AM station breaking through. So would better grounding on the case make it better? Now, I think some of the designs on the website I showed you a moment ago do address hum and AM breakthrough. But for this test, I use Spectrum Lab application to process that recorded audio and remove most of the hum. Now, this is what it sounds like in raw format with the hum and everything. Just to show you how sensitive this is to electrical noise or even the mains from my house, check this out. As I walk closer to the house or conservatory, the hum gets louder and louder. And this is why performing this test in the middle of nowhere would be best. But I was not going to go to a remote field at the middle of the night in rain. You can use any antenna really, it does not have to be that long. Now, the one I have here is most likely just over a meter in length and it actually seemed to work well. So let's take one last listen then to what I captured the other night. Remember the audio recording was from around midnight and the video that I'm showing here is just for you to look at something while I'm playing the audio. Well, there you go, guys, something different yet again. And it's also super simple to build. Now, let me know down in the comments if you've done this yourself before and let us know which VLF receiver design did you use. Now, did you build it yourself or did you purchase a ready-made solution? Also, if you're going to try this out, let me know down in the comments if you plan to make this after watching this video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something as I did. It's always interesting when you come across projects and things like this that I've never tried before. I always find it really fascinating. Anyway, take care of yourself and I'll see you guys in the next video.